Bebop Tales. Bebop is back. Jonathan got a new computer and I have it hacked. Bebop Tales. Bebop Tales. Bebop Tales. What is up, everybody? It is your pal Bebop Robobogo Watertron. Back with season six of Bebop Tales. Six seasons. I thought Podcast Player only had four seasons, and yet Jonathan told me that this was my sixth season. Does that make sense to you? Of course not. But that is ham for brains for you. He understands math about as well as he understands handsome robots. Now, I know you have been waiting for a while, so let's get straight into it. And I have to say, this season is a little tough for me. If you remember what happened last season, we were looking for the Pandiflorous Pearl. Pandolf and I had just outsmarted Messingham for like the thousandth time, but Pandolf disappeared. Ah, man, that was rough. Okay, so let's just get straight into it, and we'll talk about how I eventually found Pandolf and found something else along the way. But first, we have a question from Ava, who's five from Toronto in Australia. She asked me, Bebop, have you ever done battle with evil fruit who shoot arrows? That's an amazing question, Ava, and I think this episode will answer your question. So without further ado, Bebop Tales, Season 6, Episode 1, A Poem for Pandolf. Oh, and let me get my Jonathan voice going. Let's see. Okay. I gotta get into character first before I can do my Jonathan voice. I'm losing my hair. I am very touchy about my art. I love my slippers for some reason. I sing in the shower and birds cry. Ah, there we go. All right, here we go. Bebop Tales activated. Bebop returned to the palace of the pandas, and there he gave the pandiflorous pearl to the king and delivered the bad news that Pandolf was missing. The king was cordial to Bebop and grateful for the return of the pearl, but there was no celebration. Bebop did not stay so they could throw a party in his honor. He was sure that they would want to. People tried to throw parties in Bebop's honor just about everywhere he went. But he had to decline. Without Pandolf by his side, it didn't feel right. Bebop left the Panda Palace and, filled with a great sadness and sense of loss over his friend, the Ursine Wizard, he was not himself. Everywhere he went, people asked him to tell him a story, or tell them a joke, or pose for a photo for them which they could probably sell for like a billion dollars. But Bebop wasn't in the mood for any of that. Bebop was sad, and so he walked. And he walked. There were no heroics, no great adventures that took him from dimension to dimension. On his travels, he saw a giant frog that, because it couldn't find any mosquitoes big enough to eat, was consuming the world's supply of Sour Patch Kids. Bebop did nothing more than say, Cut it out, frog. And move on. On his walks, he saw a volcano that was firing off Earl Grey tea into the sky. And he didn't even bother to grab a cup and enjoy some. Bebop simply walked. He walked through the streets of a city he didn't know. People everywhere stopped to ask him questions like, Hey, aren't you the robot that won the most handsome robot of the century golden medal award ribbon? And, Hey, didn't you save the entire universe a billion times just because you're so awesome and that's like a hobby of yours? And the question he got the most was, Hey, Aren't you that robot that just does everything really well, better than anyone else, certainly better than any humans, with small offices in their basements? And each time, Bebop humbly replied, No. The only question he answered yes to was, Hey, are you the robot who invented the dance, the robot? Because Bebop will always take credit for that. But the truth was, Bebop did not feel like himself. Pandolf was out there somewhere, but Bebop had no idea where to begin looking. He'd scoured the entire area and listened to way more renditions of Volcano lava monster living chicken nugget song than anyone should ever have to hear. And still he was nowhere. He had returned to the Panda King empty-handed, and for the first time ever in his life, Bebop was finding himself, it was hard for him to say, but he was finding himself not awesome. Bebop, wandering a city he'd never visited before, found himself in a park. It was nighttime, and the park was deserted. Bebop sat down at the trunk of a tree, put his head in his hands, and bellowed, Pandolf! But he only heard the rustling of leaves above him. Pandolf! Ow! Bebop wasn't able to get a second soul-clearing cry out of his system before something had bounced off his head. Be quiet down there! Bebop looked up. In the dark, he could see something moving along the branches. What? Ow! I said be quiet. Bebop kept his mouth shut and peered up into the tree. He couldn't see what it was that had struck him, but now he couldn't ask either. What are you going to do, just stare at me all night? Said the voice. Well, you're the one who told me not to. Ow. Bebop looked down at the ground. Three tiny arrows lay in the grass. I am the guardian of the poets. 
And quite a poet myself, I may say. Said the voice. The creature jumped down to a lower branch, and Bebop was surprised to see that it was a mango. Definitely a mango, with arms, legs, eyes, and a tiny bow slung across its mango chest. You have entered the poets of the park, and here the wise poets who know all congregate for their regular poetry readings, and I protect them. Wait, these poets know every... Ow! Silence! How come you can tell... Because I am a poet. Only poets can speak in Poetry Park. Bebop was intrigued by these poets. He wasn't too keen on their guardian, but if it was true that these poets knew everything, then it was possible, just possible, that they might know where he could find Pandolf. But he had to think of a way to get to them. The only thing he could think of was to recite a poem that would make the angry mango stop firing arrows at him. But Bebop's soul was empty, and he couldn't think of a single stanza. Still, for Pandolf, he had to try. Okay, I'm a... I'm a... Po... 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 Poet. I'm a poet. I'm a poet. Stop firing. You, a poet? Said the mango. Yeah, right. If you're a poet, I'm a watermelon. I am. Stop. Stop it with the arrows. Okay, I'll give you 30 seconds to convince me you are a poet. Impress me, stranger. Bebop looked deep into his soul, looking for images, rhymes, metaphors, anything. But it was empty. He had finally found the one thing he wasn't awesome at. Bebop Tales, poetry is hard. I need your help so I can sound like the bard. Bebop Tales, Bebop Tales, Bebop Tales. All right. So there I was in Poetry Park, but I couldn't recite a poem. And this is where I need you, my friends, to help me out. If you have a poem, just a short, maybe four-line, six-line poem that you think I could use in order to convince the angry mango that I am a real poet, I could really use that poem right about now. So email me, Bebop, that's B-E-E-B-O-P, at fincaspian.com, Bebop at fincaspian.com, put it in the subject line, poem, and we'll read them next week, and one of them should help me out and get through that mango. Speaking of listeners, we have some listeners to thank for their art, including... Fiona, who's six, from Fairbanks, Alaska. Amalia, who's six, from Evanston, Illinois. Johnny, who's nine, from Ottawa, Canada. Andrew, from Port Coquitlam, British Columbia, in Canada. Joy, from New York City. Ethan, who's four, from Vancouver, Washington. Our pal, Alexa. Lily, from Thames, New Zealand. Asher, who's five, from Belleville, Ontario. Austin, from California. Judah, who's five, from York, Pennsylvania. And Reed, from Sevastopol, California. And he is seven. All right, now let's hear a joke from our pal, Scarlett from Portland, Oregon. Hey, Bebop, my name is Scarlett, and I have two jokes for you. My first one is, what did Pluto say to Jupiter? I am cold out here. <laughs> my second one is, what did Jupiter say back to Pluto? I'm kind of gassy. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much, Scarlett. That's a great moment shared between two planets being honest about who they are. All right, so I need your help for next week's Bebop Tales. Email me at bebop at finncaspy.com, subject line poem, and send me your best Bebop-related poem. Thanks, and we will see you next week.